David's in there. Yeah, every, it's covered. Until it wasn't. Until I got a phone call saying, you know, we don't have anybody running for Ward 1. Or Ward 3, for that matter. I said, what? How can that be? Well, we don't. So what do you think, Bob? I said, well, sure. I mean, nothing's really changed in me except that um, time has gone on. I've gotten, I did get another graduate degree. I now have a third master's degree in legal studies. I got that during the COVID. So I'm, I, you know, government and law, it's kind of, it's interesting to me now, probably more, more so than it, it was, uh, I guess, three years ago. So yeah, basically a phone call. What do you want to do? Okay, sure, I'll get 20 signatures, people that, that know me, and I'm in. And so, great. And then, and then I thought, wait a minute. I don't want to run unopposed. This is not good to be in an election where you just get picked. So I was so happy to know that uh, there was another candidate, like Tim. I have not met him, um, but I'm glad that he's in the race. And may the best man win, definitely. I'm all about that. But, um, and now Ward 3 has two candidates, so I think that's good. Um, you know, I know that uh, Tolliver, when he won Ward 3, he, you know, there was, uh, he ran unopposed. And I think um, Megan, I guess her name is, she ran unopposed on the council. Um, I think it's good to have some competition, it, it, friendly competition for sure. But um, I think it gives people a choice, gives people something to think about. Um, you know, we'll see what happens is all we can talk about. We'll see what happens. There is another issue that's uh, coming up that David's very um, big on, and he was uh, big on this uh, even when he was a town council related to the tax differential. That, that's a big um, deal. Like basically we're being double taxed here in this town. We're, pa we're, being, we're paying for services that the county should provide, but, the, but they're not, and so we have to pay for it ourselves. Like, just like uh, what, um, uh, uh, related to, for example, plowing the streets. <laughs> I mean, as simple as that. There's, there's other issues around, uh, about that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into that. Uh, the case, there's some case law about that, and I'm going to look into how that's all going to fit for us. So that, this legal studies background is going to work, work well. And David said this. He said, look, whatever happens, I still need you on a special project to help me with this, this, this tax differential. And I said, be glad to do it. I mean, you know, I, you know, whatever it takes for us to make it even, you know, make, make, you know, make us pay our fair share and not feel like we're getting sort of taken, if you will. Who wants to pay double tax? Oh, I do. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Nobody wants that. I hope so. Four years ago, um, I had a, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not going to talk about the incident, but an incident happened which made me aware of there is really a, a racial issue here. And I thought, wow, I, I really didn't expect that. But then, I'm, okay, so you learn about these things when you go to a new town. And I, I lived in D.C. for 30 years, and I've worked, um, I had a lot of great friends, white friends, black friends, all, you know, Asian friends. I mean, you don't, you don't see the, you don't see lines, color lines, if you will. And on the metro, when you go to work, it's just, oh, it's like you're, you're in a multi metropolitan, multiplex, multicultural. It's just everything and everything and everyone. And I didn't realize here that there was still this division that, that is, you know, cropped up. So I, I'm in favor of, of making, doing whatever it takes to make people comfortable together. And I wish, I wish there was more integration, even in businesses downtown here. You know, we have a white business, a black business, a white business, a black business. Why can't we all have that kind of thing? Um, I would be more in favor of that than anything else, just because this is a town with a lot of different people live in it. We should, they should be represented. Well, there's, you know, like in any town, I think of this town as a small nonprofit. Let's play it that way. I've been in nonprofits for 30 years, and one of my roles in nonprofits has been uh, being a CFO or a controller for example. And so I see the, ne the need, if you will, of managing money, good stewardship, these kinds of things. And I do worry a, a little bit about things are going to get more expensive. It's, it's, this isn't going to be a cheaper town. It's not going to be easier to buy things. So we have to be a little, we have to be careful. Yeah, we got to be careful with the budget, careful with our resources, and make sure we, we have used good stewardship. So that, to me, is, has, it's been my play uh, for the last, what, you know, I ran in 2017. It's my play right now. You know, uh, the uh, town council is the board of directors of, of, of the town. 
a board of directors of a nonprofit. It's a five million dollar nonprofit, basically. The town manager is the executive director. He runs the town. He's with you know, he's the staffing and all that. But but as a board member, board members need to pay attention to things like budgets, like the money. And my opinion has been, and people can argue with me, that there hasn't been that stewardship, in my opinion. I don't think it's because anybody's trying to get away with anything. I just don't think that there's a depth of bench strength, we'll call it, in, in, in the financial arena. So to me, that just keeping our eye on that ball is going to be a good one because, it's, like I said, things are not going to get cheaper. They're going to get more expensive. And we're going to charge people more on their uh, property tax. Yeah. This could be a major problem. Well, when, you, when I looked at I did a lot of looking at the budget, actually. And there's a lot of money being spent. And I don't want to go into details about that. But the fact is, there may be reallocations that need to be made. We may have a minimalistic budget, but it may seem even more minimal if you're not spending it on the, in the right areas. So you can, you can, you can well, we don't have enough money for this. Well, what, what, is that true? Are you sure about that? Because we pay a lot over there that's not being used, you see. And so part of what I want to, what I would look at is, you know, budgets to actual. You know, can, have we seen what the actual looks like? You know, every year the budget might go up a little bit. And the question becomes, well, why is it going up? You haven't spent this money over here. We could keep it the same. Now, if we are spending more money, sure, the budget should go up. There should be a, a, a synergy, if you will, between the budget, what we're spending, what, we, what our needs are. So that, to me, is, again, it's just because of my background. Been, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, just, I look at these things probably in a different way. What's changed is just my um, comfort of living in Chestertown, perhaps, and, and maybe getting to know more people here. And I, I'm an adjunct professor at the college now. I teach accounting and tax, um, so I've got that whole thing going. Um, I also help start the uh, Chester River Wellness Alliance, which is a um, uh, you know, alternative health care, health, you know, Reiki, you know, massage therapy, acupuncture. I had my first acupuncture yesterday by, by a member of the Alliance. That was pretty cool. So yeah, I was the um, treasurer for Midshore Pro Bono, which is the, um, uh, the legal services, and uh, also was the treasurer for a short time for all seasons. It's the Rape Crisis Center. So but going through and doing, doing all these things with nonprofits has sort of expanded my field of vision and what's going on around here. And there's a lot going around. I mean, there's a lot going on here. So I, perhaps when I, a year, you know, three years ago, three and a half years ago, I didn't have that, that sense of it, you know, how much was happening, not just in Chestertown, but in the, in the county itself.